The Indian government is seeking legal opinions from international law experts in Qatari law and is also engaging in diplomatic efforts to persuade the Qatari leadership to seek the release of eight ex-Indian Navy officers. After allowing the Chinese vessel to enter Colombo port for replenishments, Sri Lanka has granted 48 hours for the Chinese vessel to conduct marine research off the island's west coast under supervision. The Ordnance Factory Medoc will roll out carrier command post-tracked vehicles today, that are capable of accomplishing all tactical fire control functions to achieve effective deployment of self-propelled artillery guns. The Indian Army and Indian Air Force contingent comprising 120 personnel has departed for Kazakhstan to take part in the 7th edition of Joint Military Exercise CAS in 2023. Shoft Shipyard Private Limited has launched a 25-ton bollard pull tug for the Indian Navy that will facilitate assistance to warships and submarines. 120 troops from armies of India and Malaysia have started joint exercise Hari Mao Shakti in the Northeast that will include multi-domain operations in a sub-conventional scenario. China has launched the first Type 93B new generation nuclear-powered guided missile submarine, and three such SSGNs could be operational by next year. The Defense Ministry has granted in principle approval for the licensed manufacturing of six missiles systems with 60% indigenous content by Indian companies, that includes 110 km range ARB 27ET1 infrared guided air-to-air -air missile, 260 km range improved KH-35 anti-ship missile, 8 km range Mistral air-to-air -air missile. 120 km range Crystal Maze 2 for precision attack against large targets, 110 km range X-31P anti-radiation missile, and 30 km range high-speed low drag Mark II bomb. Once the third and fourth pre-production Tejas Mark II aircraft joins the program, the Aeronautical Development Agency will certify and integrate an initial set of four air-to-air -air missiles in the Phase 1, that will allow the aircraft to enter production, after which the Indian Air Force will take over the weapons integration program, which will fast-track the induction process by reducing the need to test all weapons before deployment. Hindustan Aeronautics has issued an expression of interest seeking eligible Indian companies for the indigenous design and development of line replaceable units spares and materials used in the Su-30 aircraft. This shift towards indigenous production is not only cost-effective, but will reduce dependence on foreign suppliers for critical components. Officials have said, India's indigenous long-range surface-to-air missile system being developed under Project KUSA, will be ready for operational deployment by 2028, that will be able to detect and destroy incoming stealth fighters or wax aerial tankers cruise missiles at ranges of 150 km, 250 km and 350 km using three long-range interceptor missiles. It will have single-shot kill probability of 80% for single missile launch, and over 90% for salvo launch. Armenia is turning to India to tap into its expertise in modernizing Soviet and Russian defense equipment and integrating them with Western systems. Armenia has sought Indian help in modernizing its fleet of Russian T-72 tanks after experiencing significant losses to loitering ammunition deployed by Azerbaijani forces, that includes 260 tanks and armored vehicles. The formal agreement for the construction of three advanced Calvary class submarines will be signed by February 2024, and media reports indicate that the three submarines are expected to cost 10,000 crore rupees each mainly due to enhancements such as AIP system, advanced lithium-ion battery packs, and changes in submarine sensors and equipment. France has also offered to equip these submarines with advanced weaponry such as F-21 heavyweight torpedoes and 1,400 km range naval scalp cruise missile. Today's Top 3 Comments Oh, <laughs>
Oh, Mark, dropped it.